it's not like they're gonna be lining up to hire the guy, you know, not after what's happened. What is this, three stops in the last six years? He's got George telling him who's supposed to bet where, who plays, who sits. Well, I'm not saying Martin's perfect, but the guy definitely understands the game. Yeah. It's sad. George is destroying him. He's making Martin feel like he's nothing. You know, Steinbrenner, he didn't care about anybody's feelings. To him, we're not professionals, we're employees, or worse. He just treats everybody bad. You know, there's not one guy in this club that's happy. Can I quote you on that? Oh, I don't know, Steve. Come on, Thurm, you don't want this to be anonymous. Nobody will take it seriously. How about I call you a prominent Yankee? Prominent Yankee? What is this? Who said it, Gabe? I want to know who said it. Happy? I do not pay them to be happy. I pay them to do a job. They don't do it. I have every right to kick it in the ass. Happy? Who's happy anyway? George. Dictating? I wish the hell I could. I dictate they win a few games. Wouldn't be in third place. They want a statement for a prominent Yankee. They're going to get one. Judy, I want Steve Jacobs on the phone right now. George, if you go public and you don't watch what you say, you're going to confirm everything that he said. You do not need a pissing contest with the press. Damn it! Bunch of damn prima donnas, it's what they are! But I tell you what I will do. Judy? Come in here, please, dear. There's something I want to dictate. Hey, boss, you got a minute? Sure, Thurm, come on in. You see the look on that kid's face? Uh, what kid? The bellboy. I give him a five. He looks at me like I crapped in his pocket. I swear to God, I do not understand people sometimes. What can I do for you? It was me. What was you? That prominent Yankee stuff. I said those things to Jacobson. Look, I know you think it was somebody else, like Mayor Rivers or somebody, but it wasn't. It was me, and I don't want anybody else to get in trouble for it. I see. Thurman, it takes a man to admit a mistake. I didn't say it was a mistake. That's why I made you my captain, and I appreciate you coming up here and setting the record straight. You are the glue that holds this team together, my friend, and I admire your loyalty to Billy, but you are not good with the press. You're from the Midwest, like I am, you and me. And we can be too trusting. You have to be careful with what you say to these people in public. Remember, they're reporters. It's all just grist for the mill. Look, George, it was me who talked to Jacobson. Only me. That's what I wanted you to know. OK. OK, yesterday's business, no hard feelings then. What are you talking about? Everybody, can I have your attention, please? Billy has a statement to make. 
He wants to address certain comments that were recently made by a, quote, prominent Yankee. Go ahead. Con contrary to those statements, I want everyone to know that Mr. Steinbrenner is in no way interfering with my day-to-day -day baseball decisions or is in any way hampering my ability to manage this ball club. Who wrote that for you, Billy? Do you really want me to print that uh, as your own words? Yeah, Billy's been yes very no. generous with his time. Day. We need Billy. a few minutes, Billy. team only. Let's go. Did George make him read that, Gabe? I'll talk to you after the game, Steve. Come on. Those weren't right. Team only. Yeah. Can I just okay. say, come on. Offends me. You got a problem, you come to me. My door has always been open, and it remains so. Well, I don't know who did this, but anyone who puts on the pinstripes becomes a prominent Yankee. And this sort of monkey business just sullies the character of every man in this organization. That's all. New York has been sweltering all summer under a series of intense heat waves. The heat has put a severe strain on municipal services. Those without air conditioning have sought relief wherever they can find it. The latest torrid blast to strike the city has spared neither man nor beast, as temperatures soar past the 100 degree mark. I heard the cops almost had him. I heard that too. Maybe we'll scare them off. What do you think, Jimmy? July 29th. July 29th. I don't get it. What did you and the wife do on your anniversary, Vic? Same thing we do every year. Go to some fish joint sheets at bank. We've been going there since we've been going out. What's that got to do with July 29th? July 29th is the one-year anniversary of Son of Sam's first kill. And I'll lay odds, fellas. That's the next time we see him. Listen to this, huh? <clears throat> Police are investigating a theory that the 44 caliber killer who calls himself Son of Sam may have taken the nickname from a record written and sung by the late Jimi Hendrix. What does Dunleavy get this crap? Oh, I'm getting to that. It's an interesting theory. Remark Captain Joseph Borelli, second in command of the task force hunting the killer, a theory that we are definitely going to look into. What was I supposed to tell the guy? <laughs> Anybody check Peter Franklin's alibi? <laughs> 29. I told Beam that's our best guess when he's gonna hit again. That's less than three weeks from now. Yeah. The mayor's promised me more manpower, more detectives, more unis, more undercover. Yeah, right. Don't hold your breath. Two lines are down, and, uh, and I'm losing megawatts like crazy. Can I get you another? Aren't you the best catcher in the American League? Carlton Fisk? Uh-huh. Wait to grab a beer? No problem, Lou. How you doing? Listen, I don't want you to take this the wrong way or anything, but I think we ought to go talk to George. No. Nope. We'll sit down with him. We'll make him buy us breakfast. We'll tell him what we think. It can't make things any worse. Yeah, it can. Well, I think it's worth a shot, Therm. You know, before there's gunplay. George put you up to this, didn't he? Put me up to what? How long have you been his errand boy, Lou? No, it's not that way. Not. Exactly. 
You know, do it or don't do it. It's up to you. Oh, yeah, it's fine. George wants to talk to me. <clears throat> Let's do it. Clear the air. Let's go. Right now. Oh, come on. That's not a good idea, Thurman. Come on, Lou. Come on, Thurman. We're going to wake him up. Hello. Oh, we're family. You know, we're family here. His door's always open. He wants to be my daddy. Here we go. Daddy! I got a problem. Hi, George. What the hell? You want to talk? Let's talk. I don't want to talk. If we got a lame duck manager worrying about his future, we, we got a manager who can't do his job. George, fire him or get off his back. Is that what you want? You want me to fire him? No, don't put words in my mouth. And the guy's falling apart, George. Have you seen Billy? I mean, the guy looks terrible, it, like he's at death's door. Look, Martin is a great manager, and I'm behind him 100%, but nobody can live with the pressure that you're putting the guy and under. And those clauses you put into his contract about his behavior, about firing him without pay, you know, it really eats at him. I'm confused. What the hell do you want from me? I hand him the best lineup in baseball, and we're stuck in third. Oh, we're not stuck anywhere. We'll still take it. With Martin or without him? Shh. Did you shush me? What's the matter? You don't like girls? Baseball is better than girls. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out. Get out of here. I don't like you anyway. Go find myself a real man. Yeah. With him is better. George! Who the hell's in there, huh? George, open up! George! Who's in here? Billy! We got a big game tomorrow. I'm going to bed and you no, should too. Hey now, Bill, come on. Yeah. Now come on, Bill. Get a hold Who's of yourself. Who's in here, huh? Now listen, my friend, you've obviously had a crowd. And it's time to turn in. You got two of my guys in here, I George. I heard it. Now, now, what's going on, huh? Eh? Oh, what do you think? I'm deaf, dumb, and blind that I was born yesterday, huh? Eh? Now, listen, Bill. There's you no got to no. get a hold of yourself. <sighs> well, you're going to lose everything down there. I'm trying. You're trying? What the hell you mean you're trying? All you got to do is hit the damn button. You got to shed 400 megawatts of load. Denny, I could black out whole sections of the city. Damn it, Bill, just do it. You have something to say to me? Say it to my face! Now listen, you just calm down. Take your damn job and shove it up your ass. All right, you know what? I think we got ourselves Bunch a little bit. Bunch of queers. Billy, Billy, nobody's plotting anything, and nobody's queer. I always knew you were a pansy, Lou. I'm not a pansy. You want another manager? George, get yourself Dick Williams, eh? Keep talking, we can make yeah, it happen. Yeah, fruitcake. I'm not a fruitcake either. Listen, Billy, Billy, listen to me. Billy, listen to me. I need to two of the village people. Billy, Billy. Judas, okay, right. okay. You want to hang yourself with the owner? I am not going to stop you, but that'll be the end for you. Come on. We won't let you clean toilets at the Mesky. You shouldn't have gone behind my back. Yeah, there's a lot of things I shouldn't have done, but I did it. I'll open a vein tomorrow. Now you're gonna get a hold of yourself or what? You got a shit load right now, and a whole city's gonna go down the toilet. Bill, do something. Push the button. Come on, do it. That's not enough. Come on, Bill. Damn it, Bill, just do it now. Since just after 9.30 tonight, a miserable, muggy Wednesday, 10 million people in New York have been without power. And all I want to know, is there really a blackout? Traffic lights went out, too, but volunteers are manning hundreds of street corners to keep the traffic moving. Thousands of people are trapped in the subway, yet some riders consider it a safe haven. Well, I'd rather stay in here than go out there and get raped or mugged or something. At Brooklyn Jewish Hospital, they have moved the emergency room outdoors to a parking lot. While most New Yorkers are coping, some valiantly with the blackout, thousands of others have seized the chance to loot. Some looters roam the streets yelling, it's Christmas time, it's Christmas time. 
And so it is, as thousands of them have broken security fences and windows and are helping themselves to all kinds of merchandise as the blackout continues. The window smashing, burning, and stealing is escalating, leaving police outmanned and unable to provide security. More than 500 fires have been set throughout the city, 42 of them are serious. As firemen fight this Brooklyn fire, behind the building, young men and women are looting a toy store, carrying off boxes of dolls, boats, and planes. In some cases, police have been forced to abandon sections to looters who threw bricks and bottles. 80 officers have been injured so far, but police are doing the best they can, calling out more and more manpower as the night wears on. It is, said one police officer, New York City's worst nightmare. Hundreds have been injured in this senseless damage and destruction. Here, take these. I swear to God, Billy, you gotta take better care of yourself. You gotta look after yourself. I mean, look at you. You don't eat. You're so damn thin. How many times I gotta tell you? I can't eat when I lose. I can't sleep. Three glasses. Drink them all. Thank you, George. Now listen to me. I know it's been hard. I know I'm not an easy man to work for. But I think you're distracted, my friend. Oh, whose fault is that, huh? You want me to bat Jackson for you? Billy Reggie's averaged 30 homers and 100 rivies over the past four years, and he's won three World Series. Nobody else can say that. He's earned it, Billy. <sighs> what do I get? I will guarantee your salary despite the bad boy clauses in your contract. And I promise to let you finish out the season as manager, no matter what. Even say so publicly. It's fair, Billy. No more agree? When first light broke over the area this morning, it was still not electric. New York was a city in silhouettes. Several fires were still burning. The looting and burning did not end with daylight. This was the scene on Broadway in Brooklyn this morning. It wasn't like this at all in most of New York, but in a few neighborhoods, the blackout was a period of great destruction and much lawlessness. At one automobile outlet, looters broke in and drove away 50 new cars. One of the things that was rather amazing about it was the festive atmosphere that went with the looting. It was like a carnival. I saw it was an opportunity for me. I made, I got me a couple of televisions. I made me some money. People are hungry. And the people had a chance to show their hungerness. And in July, the seventh month of 1977, was another Christmas. For the people. Does Con Ed intend to reimburse small businessmen who have been wiped out? We haven't any right, as I see it, uh, to place upon our customers or on our stockholders uh, the uh, financial responsibility for the failure of the police force. Con Ed, as it seems, is going to have us foot the bill. Not if I can help it. Can you win against Con Ed? Why not? With Reggie Jackson batting cleanup and going 0 for 4, Yanks lost in Kansas City 5 to 1. I did it George's way. You did? Yeah, I'm right. One time. I'm going down the toilet. I'm going in my own spot. Okay. The Yanks headed the All Star break three games out of first, their largest deficit in a month after dropping their third straight to the Kansas City Royals 8 4.
Gabe, he promised me. He looked me in the eye and he promised me. Then he goes out and he bats him sixth. So what's our strategy? Our strategy? Our strategy is that he works for me and I tell him what to do. That's our strategy. He is gone. You get me someone I can trust. Tough time to be looking, Joe. I don't care. Do it. I prefer to stay within the organization. What do you think of Hauser? Fine. Hauser, Yogi, Boo Boo. I don't care. You do it. Get Munson on the phone now. Look, I'm saying it's up to you, George. You do what you want, all right? We're all pros. Yeah, no, nobody's gonna quit if you change managers. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest player who ever played in the pinstripe, the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. Thanks, Jim. Well, what's good tonight? Blondes, right. table of six in the back. Have a good time. Unbelievable. You look ravishing. Thank you. Blondes is... <laughs> hey, there he is. Started wondering, like, you weren't going to show us? Uh, sorry, I had a little right. post-game TV thing I had to take care of. In the flesh. Oh, uh, Reggie Jackson. I know. Hell of a game, Reg. Hell of a game. Uh, can we not talk about baseball, please? What's your name? Sydney. So, um, do you have a friend, Sydney? A friend? Mm. You mean for you? For me? Hey. Hey, come on. What, are you gotta be kidding? <laughs> I know someone. Mm. She knows someone. Tell you what. I'll flip a coin. Hmm? Heads, you come home with me. And tails, I won't ask you again. But I, I gotta warn you, I'm a lucky man. Very, 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 very lucky man. I can't do that. You're not afraid of me, are you? No. But, but it'll be fun. I got something I want to show you. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm. A saddle. Got my name stitched right on it and everything. I might even let you ride on it if you treat me nice. So, uh, you a cowboy? That's right, Darla. I'm a Hasbro Kite Terry. Biggest gun this side of the Hudson. <laughs> they said you ain't never been with a real cowboy. You ain't never been at all. Special police task force that is trying to find this killer thinks Sam is the name he has given his gun. They want to get to him before he can use it again. Dick. 
Can I have a word? Sure, I guess. We're firing Billy. I'd like you to take over the team. You know what George is like. Once he makes a decision, there's no going back. I understand. You won't catch the heat that Billy does, because you won't draw it on yourself. And we know that you've always wanted to manage. We're willing to give you that shot. But we don't have a lot of time. George wants me to make the announcement before tomorrow night's game. <laughs> You want me to do a commercial with George Steinbrenner? That's right. I don't think so. That's a I put the last nail in his coffin if I could. Marvin Owen. Hey, yeah. Good to see you. Right. Let you in here. Coming up on the 29th, Inspector. When are you going to get this crate? Why don't you just leave? Come on, there. I'll give you something. Like what? Anything you got. Psychics, astrologers, anybody. What am I, Kojak? Oh, you could be. Can you give me something? Oh, boy, there's an awful hard to refuse. Just give me a quote, Dad. Just a quote. You want a quote? All right, write this down. Somebody out there knows this guy. Maybe family, maybe a friend. Whoever they are, they need to come to us, and they need to come to us now. End quote. Print that. It's the 24th, Joe, which means we got five days. Five days, Joe. We got no more than we had five months ago. I know. All right, listen. I want female cops. I want them in all the clubs in the outer boroughs. I want them as decoys. Inspector. Plus, I want all the bridges and tunnels covered, unis in every toll plaza. Inspector. What? We don't have that many women in the department. So you slap some wigs on guys. Just do what I'm telling you, Joe, huh? As the one-year anniversary of the first murder attributed to the 44 caliber killer what approaches, police have intensified their manhunt for the son of Sam. Canvassing areas where the killer has struck and other neighborhoods in the outer boroughs, police are hoping that someone will have information leading to an arrest before the son of Sam has a chance to kill again. He stared out at the open front door. The first light of morning was washing the empty street outside. Dowd shook his head. Mean bastard, he said. Alone and mean. These are the traits of the 44 caliber killer. The one who calls himself the son of Sam, and who has been a part of the lives of many of the young people of this city for nearly a full year. No, no parking. Not at all. It's just it's just too dangerous. You can't take the chance. I feel kind of spooked about it. You know? you know, just to be safe, and I'm looking over my shoulder in the car, you know? Fearing that the 44 cal killer may strike on the anniversary of his first murder, police have beefed up the special task force that is hunting the son of Sam. Detectives will be paying special attention to discotheques in eastern Queens and neighboring Bronx communities, the favorite haunts of the man who has killed five persons and wounded six. They'll be watching the popular hangouts of young women, the 44 killer's special targets. No, I'm scared. I run home every night. I was wondering about the mystery of the whole thing. Why people have to get shot like this? I think there's just a, a lot of, you know, hysteria, and uh, I think people are really shook up. Really shook up bed. You think we're over the four hundred? I hope so. Yeah. I never went in for that science of hitting, you know. <laughs> you think he's happy down there? Fishing in the Keys? Who? Williams. That's all he does. Yeah. <laughs> he don't seem the kind of guy who's happy anywhere. You gonna dress? What for? Yeah. 
I'll be right up. Billy, word has it that this is your last game. Is it true? You talked to George this morning? What do you think they've got in mind to replace you? What are you guys, my pallbearers? It's like throwing meat to the lions. Let's just get this over with. Have a seat, Billy. Am I fired? You're here, aren't you? How's it turn you down? You did, didn't it? Good for him. You're our manager, Billy. You couldn't find anybody who put up with him, could you, Gabe? Not the point. Sure it is. Now, for Pete's sake, Billy, why don't you cut the crap and just bat the man forth? I don't understand. What does it cost you? Are we done here? Hmm? Billy, how'd it go? What did George have to say? Gabe, give you a reprieve. You're gonna bat Reggie forth? Hell, I'd bat Adolf Hitler, Benito Mussolini, and Hirohito if I thought they'd help me win. Come on, Billy, you're not comparing Reggie to them. No. No, I was just, uh, paraphrasing. They guarantee you the job is yours for the rest of the season? Nothing's guaranteed, Steve. Hell, life itself is six to five again. I swear to God gave the papers, you know. When is one of these lemmings gonna have the guts to stand up and say the guy's in the wrong profession? Temperamentally, maybe. But he's got one of the best baseball minds in the game. I don't deny it. I wouldn't have hired him if he didn't. But it doesn't excuse his psychotic behavior, you know, his defiance. It's as if, it's as if he enjoys poking me in the eye with a stick. I swear to God, he enjoys it. You know, I don't understand it. I'm fair, okay? I'm not easy, but I'm fair. I only ask my guys to work as hard as I do. I'm not some sort of... Ogre. Ogre, I'm not. I'm not an ogre. Am I, Gabe? I know, George. I mean, you know, and so, as if he got the press under some sort of spell. You know, I swear to God, I walk down the street every day. The cabbies, you know, the construction guys. Hey, George, you know, how you doing? Good going, George. Way to get us a pennant. We love you, George. They hear it every day, you know? And I'm out there working my ass off to get us a ring. He's off whoring around in his cowboy boots. You open up the papers, you know, somehow I'm Mussolini. He's Huckleberry Finn. The chap's my bottom, I swear to God. How does he get away with it? I don't understand. How's he put it over? It's as if they're making it out like, 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 I'm torturing him, you know? Like, 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 I'm tor torca... Torca model. Him, that guy. I don't know how he gets away with it. Well, nothing we can do about it now. Oh, no? There comes a time when, for his own good, we must demand an accountability from Billy Martin for the things that he says he does. Now, he's been telling you people that I've been riding him constantly, that I've been abusive. It's not the case. But anytime George Steinbrenner or Gabe Paul or anyone from management, for that matter, makes a suggestion, he claims he's being dictated to. He's not being dictated to. And anyone that tells you any different, they're not telling the truth. So why do you think the fans love him so much, George? Because he's a little man. And everyone loves a little man because they feel like they can identify with him. But New York's a pretty smart, sophisticated place. And eventually, the fans are going to get wise. But you're not going to fire Billy. As I've said all along, that decision rests with Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul? Yes. And speaking of Mr. Paul, he has come up with a list. A list of qualifications for judging a manager. <laughs> they carved in stone, Gabe? They would be, but I could only think of seven. <laughs> <laughs> One. Does he win? Two, does he work hard enough? Three, is he emotionally equipped to lead the men under him? Does he understand human nature? Is he honorable? Honorable? Is he honorable? A man doesn't know the meaning of the word. 
Honorable my ass. It's just a tactic. He's trying to break me, Yoke. Yeah, like that Captain Queen guy, huh? What does he think, I'm stupid that I can't see right through him? I'm a free spirit, Yoke. I'd like to see someone else manage under these conditions. Am I emotionally equipped? Up my ass like a groundhog, 24-7. Am I honorable? I'll tell you what. What the heck are you doing? I'm loading up. You want to throw a spitball? Spitball. You want to throw one? Soap and up. There it is. Uh -huh. No one's going to check that ball. You said it, not me. Honorable. Cat, I got a little something for you. I told you this is Thurman. Empire never checked the crowd. Yeah, you show him. Thurman Munson hit his 100th career home run in a 14-2 shellacking of the Orioles. But the Yankees continue to trail the first place Boston Red Sox by a game. Congratulations on your 100th home run as a Yankee, George. Nobody ever sent me a big bottle of nothing when I hit my 100th. Never hit a hundred anything. I've hit a hundred people in bars and stuff <laughs> like that. Chief, are you any closer to catching the son of Sam today than you were, say, 48 hours ago? No, we are not. We still have no idea of his identity or his location. He's a male white, 25 to 35, approximately 5'7 to 5'10. A stocky build, and he had light, disheveled hair. The game has kind of changed for him. Originally, the pleasure was in the killing. The pleasure now is in the outsmarting of the police. Where are you going? I'm going home to get some sleep. Hey, doesn't George have a policy against beards? Just asking. Special satisfaction of playing in your old club here in Oakland? Uh, not really. It's just, uh, you know, nice to come back and see my fans and uh, my old friends, you know? You're on a long road trip, Reggie. After this West Coast swing, I bet it'll be good to get back to New York. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, New York is, um, well, things are different there. Very different. Uh, you know, you can't really open your mouth without having everything they say, uh, everything you say, splashed in the tabloids. Um, you know, people wondered why I had such a hard time getting along. It's the media. Um, you know, they, 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 they put me in this in this pressure cooker so so they can get a story. Um, you know, to them, I'm not really even a human being. Um, they use me, use me, and after they're through using me, they'll just throw me away. Any comment? Brevity apparently really is the soul of wit. Hey, Reg. What? Let me just make sure I have this quote right. To them, I'm not even a human being. They use me, use me, and when they're done using me, they'll throw me away. Yeah, that's what I got, Reg. Me too. Sounds about right. sound kind of weird, but... But what? I 
ever really dated that many guys. I mean, I had a boyfriend in high school, but we were just kids, so. Well, it's scary when you like someone. Yeah. Like, uh, what if they don't like you back? We should probably go. It's getting late. I promised my dad, you know, a son of Sam and all. Okay. Brooklyn. 